and welcome back to another episode of Lumberjack Barbecue. Happy New Year to you all. Today we are going to have pork and sauerkraut. I docked up some sauerkraut yesterday. It's in the refrigerator. I've had these ribs over here marinating since uh, uh, yesterday. They're marinating in an Asian, uh, some, uh, I had an Asian spice recipe I picked up on allrecipes.com. I'm going to put directions for the brine, directions for the sauce uh, down in the description box. Um, what I'm going to get doing here is uh, rinse them off, dry them off, and then add some rub to have me mix up, which is just cayenne pepper, some uh, black pepper, and I threw in salt, I didn't say any salt. So that's what we're doing, and uh, I'll bring you back when we're ready to uh, uh, throw these babies on the grill. Bye. It was awful uh, windy out, and uh can't hear my voice a lot of times, so we're going to do a little narration here, what I'm telling you right now, or explaining to you. Especially if you're new to barbecue or grilling, the zones of fire, you got your indirect and your direct side. Indirect side is where we do most of our work. Unless we're seared, like say some pork chops or some chicken. Uh, now we're going to clean off this grate here. If I remember correctly, the last time I did a cook, I cleaned it off uh, when it was done. There's not much here to clean off. But we're just going to give it a little brush anyway. For anybody that's uh, new out there to barbecue and grill, and give you an idea of what's going on. And, uh, now it's time to put the water pan in. You do it after the, this uh, because you don't want all that residue coming down from when you're scraping. We're going to just uh, put a little aluminum pan down in there, pour a little water in there, and that'll create some humidity and add some moisture to these, uh, these ribs we got going on today. And uh, soon after that, we'll uh, season up our grapes. You can use a lot of different things. You can use beer. You can use uh, apple cider. You can use apple juice. Or whatever you like. Soda. Root beer. It don't matter because we're going to base with this. Uh, it's going to have the drippings plus uh, your original uh, liquid in there. We're going to base with that. So use what you uh, you like to use. And uh, next we're going to be uh, taking some cooking oil on a napkin or paper towel. And using our tongs, slowly uh, work it around the grate. Kind of give it a nonstick surface. Season up your grill a little bit. Good thing to do. That way your meat isn't sticking. Now in case of these ribs, uh, they wouldn't have stuck anyway, I, I believe. Uh, typically I don't have them sticking. But we like to keep our grill nice and seasoned up and uh, ready to go at all times. Soon we'll be getting uh, the stars of the show on the grill using this uh, marinade and uh, later on the uh, uh, barbecue sauce. And they look like these ribs look well seasoned up, uh, well rubbed, I should say. Uh, we don't put a lot on ours. Uh, especially salt. Salt's, uh, we're trying to stay away from the salt so much. There's definitely salt on there, but not maybe as much as the rubs you get out there in the grocery store. You might even make yourself. Oh, my. Baldy tongs there, brother. That, uh, that rack of ribs is well, jumping onto the grill. Couldn't wait to get in there. <laughs> There's his brother. And sister, and uh, other sister, coming up shortly here. It's going to be a wonderful day at Lumberjackville. Two of these, uh, these uh, pork ribs, uh, I'm going to be sending it over to my in-laws. Here we are, after one hour, lots of steam going on. Nice thing, I think it was, uh, oh gosh. This was New Year's Day. I think it was probably like 15 degrees or something like that. It was really cold out. Man, maybe it's 20. I forget. It was cold. We're just going to um, flip these uh, ribs around for some even heating and uh, even smoking. And uh, that way we're not overcooking on one side or undercooking on the other. And I do believe... Uh, these middle ribs ought to go to the outside because the outsides, because of the shape of the grill, because of it being round, the outside tend to get closer to the uh, the direct fire. 
Uh, so we're going to swap that around too. Uh, shortly after this, we'll be tending to some other other duties you got to take care of while you're uh, running your pit. And uh, no, get that buddy in there. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Check him out. That looks good. Move it around there. I don't like laying on top of the other one, but sometimes you just have to to get away from that, that direct heat there. All right. Now what we're going to do is uh, try to restoke our fire a little bit over here, move some things around, create some air pockets so that uh, your uh, air source can get up through there and give the appropriate amount of uh, um, fire. Also, we got some... Uh, Hickory smoking wood that we put in there, and we want to make sure we're flipping that around a little bit, get some smoke going on it. We'll add some more here too. First three hours, uh, that's when you're gonna get your smoke. After that, the meat doesn't uh, really want to accept the smoke anymore. I think I learned that from uh, JV or uh, the JV's Cajun cooking or something like that. Uh, I can't remember the exact. Maybe I'll put a link down in the description box for him. Now we're gonna take and uh. Baste our ribs with this uh, water uh, slash uh, drippings uh, juice here. Just try to keep some uh, moisture in these ribs. And uh, yeah, looking good. After two hours, these ribs are taking on some more color, some more smoke. And uh, looking, looking relatively good. We're going to do a little flipping around. As I said before, we want nice even heating, or as good as we can get. And there, even smoke, I'm starting to see some uh, little burnt ends on the, the rib bones there, looking nice. Certainly don't have any pullback on the uh, pullback for the bones yet. Uh, that's a good indicator to get even closer to done. Do a little basting again. I'll try to baste uh, every hour. Add some more uh, moisture to them. Uh, make sure that they come out nice and tender. And uh, so we got some good flame going on over there in the uh, direct side where the charcoals are. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but uh, I learned this from uh, No Hippie Barbecue. He puts his bricks in there, and they kind of give a good insulation for that fire, keep the heat in there, and uh, also keep the charcoal from coming over and maybe really burning up your pan. So we'll move these around, stoke them up a little bit, throw a couple more chunks of uh, hickory uh, wood on there, and uh, we'll be closing the lid soon and getting ready to boil these ribs up there for about an hour. Looking good. I'm liking it. And that's that. See you in an hour. After three hours, these ribs are now ready to go into aluminum foil. We're going to take them, put them in aluminum, take them in the house and put them into aluminum foil. We're going to turn them upside down with the uh, meat side down in the aluminum foil. And then we're going to pour that barbecue sauce over them. And then wrap them up real nice and tight. And they'll be in that foil for two hours. It's called the Texas Cheat. There's other names for it. Can't, can't recall them offhand. You can look it up on Google. Or whatever search engine you decide to use. Uh, and it should be really nice. Again, the, uh, the barbecue sauce, uh, Asian spice barbecue sauce, is in the description box down below. And I think this is an appropriate time to... Add some fuel to our fire. We're going to be wrapping these ribs and they're going to be uh, pretty much airtight. And uh, so if I pour some charcoal on here uh, and use my Weber as a uh, charcoal chimney, I have no worries. The binders aren't going to get to those ribs because uh, they're wrapped tight in that aluminum foil. So we're going to leave this lid off for a little while. Let's get this stoked up and voila. We got the ribs wrapped up. Fire is good and stoked. We're just relying on heat now, no more smoking wood. So let's get these uh these ribs on here.
Oh, yeah. And I think, uh, show you a little something here. Like I said, that's how I have them with the meat down, a little barbecue sauce in there. And uh, we're going to let, like I said, let these on for two hours and uh, let them create some steam, really moisten up that meat. Hopefully impart that uh, barbecue, uh, Asian barbecue sauce or Asian spice barbecue sauce. Uh, really, really get in there, permeate the meat. After two hours, this is what we got right here on the grill. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely falling apart. Now, of course, I forgot to mention um, two hours in aluminum foil, and we're working on. Uh, we're working on our last hour here. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. And uh, I had already uh, brushed on some uh, barbecue sauce, or uh, Asian spiced uh, barbecue sauce, or whatever you want to call it, onto these. And uh, we're just going to show you what they look like and let them go for another half an hour. I'm liking what I'm seeing. And if you don't like them fall apart, don't make them that way. Pull them off sooner. My family likes it that way. Here we are, unzoomed in so you can catch a peek at the lumberjack and whatever's behind the shed back there. <laughs> there we are. Gonna flip them around. I'm gonna get a little more cooking on these babies. It will take them another half an hour, which would complete six hours. Don't want to confuse anybody because that's all it took me was six hours. Now, not six hours total, uh, six hours just for the cooking. Um, of course, you know, we go inside to foil them or this or that or whatever. Then you're probably talking a good from the time you start your fire to the end, eight hours at least, maybe nine. And then setting up your film. And now we're going to throw some of that barbecue sauce on. In fact, the, the last remains of it. Asian spiced barbecue sauce. I got it off the internet, of course, and uh, I want to say that I got it at all recipes, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, I'm not very fastidious with my uh, documentation and where I found stuff, uh, so I do apologize. All right, just as promised, we're back inside the house, and uh, it's time to do a little taste test. Everybody wants to taste, but nobody wants to be on the camera, so it's just me on the camera. Uh, so we're gonna try this out. It turned out really good, I think. Uh, got a nice smoke ring on there, looking good, nice and red, very delicious. I'm hoping they seem to be falling off the bone or close to. I have to admit, I don't really taste Asian spice with it. I have to admit that. I thought I'd taste something that kind of got at me or whatever. Are they good? They're very good. They're very tender. Excuse me. Very delicious. But I can't say that I taste that Asian spice. So, um... Happy New Year to you all, and uh, thanks for stopping by and checking us out. Please hit that like uh, button, that thumbs up. Uh, please comment if you like, and uh, if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks a lot. Happy New Year.